Just going to talk to you about West African Resources uh, San Brado, which is our high grade deposit in Burkina Faso. Uh, I'll be making some forward looking statements. So um, our project is emerging into a tier one project. Um, about two years ago, we made a very high grade discovery. Um, about 12 months ago, I, I spoke here and we had mineralisation from surface down to about 170 vertical metres. In the last 12 months, we've uh, We've had about six drill rigs on site and we've taken it from about 170 vertical metres down to about 500 vertical metres now. So uh, we, we put our study out last year uh, in, in February and uh, right now we've done some internal work. It looks like the new project's going to be a multiple of what we had um, early last year. So we were looking at about 150,000 ounces a year for the first three years. Um, it's looking more like uh, over 200,000 ounces now um, with open pit underground mining. Uh, we've still got substantial ex exploration upside. There's uh, a lot of areas that we haven't looked at because previously we were, uh, we were a regional explorer. We've, we've made a high grade discovery. We've been, we've been focusing on that for the last uh, two years. Uh, but we will start to look further afield in the next 12 months. Um, we'll have an updated feasibility study finished by mid-year, so by June, uh, and that'll incorporate uh, concurrent open pit underground mining, an updated um, uh, processing flow sheet uh, from we're changing from a single stage sag mill to a two stage milling circuit uh, we're up upgrading our uh, mining permit and environmental license we're in Burkina it's one of the best places to explore so um, very stable uh, more than 10 mines uh, built in the last 10 years and we've got a very experienced team uh, running the company and the projects so last year was a uh, Again, another transformational year. We, we took mineralisation from uh, about 170 vertical metres at M1 South. We hit, hit our highest grade result, which was 21 metres at, at 53 grams, um, including half a metre at 1,600 grams per tonne. So if anyone's keen, you can probably see the gold in it from here. Uh, just mentioned before, so the feasibility study in, in February last year is going to be significantly improved by uh, June this year. Just quickly on the capital structure, so roughly 580 million shares on issue. We've got about $21 million in cash. Market cap's about $250 million. Um, board and management own about 4% of the company. Uh, our largest shareholder is 1832 out of Toronto. Um, also Macquarie Bank out of Perth and, and Sprott out of Toronto. So you might be able to read the, read the, uh, the text on this slide, but what it shows is um, the gold price dropping from about $1,600 an ounce in 2013 down to about 1060 in February 2016. So through that whole period, it was a very, very volatile um, environment for gold explorers. We stayed funded. Uh, we c continued to drill and, and do a lot of good work. Uh, initially, we were looking at a small heap leach. Um, more recently, it's going to be a much larger CIL project. Uh, on the timeline here, it looks like we will uh, complete our fees mid-year, uh, look to complete project finance before the end of the year and break ground early next year, and that would have us pouring gold in 2020. Uh, board and management, myself, I'm a founder of the company. Um, Mark Connolly uh, is chairman, Simon Storm, uh, our uh, non-exec director. The team that we've got is, is sort of emerging, um, we're building it. Uh, Lyndon Hopkins is our chief operating officer. So Lyndon and I met 15 years ago at Bonacro when he was working for Equigold in Ivory Coast. Uh, Nick's advising on project finance, uh, he's ex Macquarie Bank. Um, Vince Morell, who's our exploration manager, uh, Vince and I worked together 15 years ago as well, so he's um, very handy. Pierre Tapso is our national director, and Joanne Thompson looking after all of the um, permitting issues in country. Uh, the layout of the project, I mean, really, the, the takeaway from this slide is that we're the emerging. Uh, the, the new uh, project emerging in a new gold district. So we've got ore zone about 10 kilometres away, which is a five million ounce deposit, about one gram. Uh, B2 Gold are just down the road with the new Toega discovery. Kiak is another five million ounce deposit down the road. And what, what we think is it will be the first mine built in this region because of the compelling economics of our, of our, our project. The layout of um, San Brado, so M5 trends northeast, uh, M1 trends northwest. There's a granite dome sitting in the middle, and it's, it's quite an interesting uh, structural setting. 
over sort of well nearly three million ounces in resource on the project, well over 200,000 uh, metres of RC and diamond drilling, and predominantly diamond drilling now that we're drilling quite deep. Uh, all the deposits are very closely located, so we'll have a central processing plant. Uh, we're talking about conventional open pit and underground mining, so it's quite straightforward um, and conventional processing. So uh, the previous study, we had a single stage uh, crush and grind, and we're getting over 90% recovery. We have finessed that a bit in the last 12 months. We'll probably go towards a, an SABC circuit, which will um, give us a bit more operational flexibility as well. So this is what some of the high grade looks like. Um, a lot of visible gold. Uh, we'll have to look at probably batch treating some of this high grade material uh, when we actually get into production. It's important to know that in 12 months we've uh, tripled the depth of no mineralisation and it's an orogenic deposit. There's a lot of uh, structural control, um, strong shearing. So we expect this deposit to keep going. So we're about to step down again and put in some 800 metre holes to keep testing this, um, this deposit. The central part of it is very high grade, so you're only talking about 100 metres of strike and it's nearly 4,000 ounces per vertical metre. So it's going to be like a little jewellery box in there. So you can see the base of the pit on, on this uh, slide. Uh, that's about 130 vertical metres. Um, and what we're looking at here is con uh, con concurrent open pit underground mining. So we'll actually put a underground uh, drive in during pre-production and that allows us to really accelerate the um, gold production in the early part of the project. Uh, I won't read off all the, the results here but what's really interesting is that we've consistently hit this high grade zone even though it's quite a small amount of tonnes uh, we've hit it from uh, about 60 vertical metres down to 500. Resources, so we've treated the resources in, in two ways. There's basically open pit and underground, so using different cutoffs. Um, the high grade domain uh, has been hard, has hard boundaries. Um, it's ordinary creek with a top cut. Uh, we think it's been done very conservatively, uh, and all our work is being completed by independent consultants. So currently, uh, there's about 750,000 ounces or thereabouts in, um, in, in, in resources on M1. Uh, including open pit and underground. M5, which was our original deposit, so this is a, the deposit we were planning to heap leach and the good thing about M5 is it's 3 k's long up to 300 metres wide, there's lots of oxide on it. Um, that gives us operational flexibility so we can still go and build a 2 million tonne printed plant and feed through the high grade preferentially or, or prioritise the high grade and then we can backfill the schedule with lower grade material from M5. Uh, you can see this slide here, all our resources are being constrained with open pit shells, so the bottom result which is 8 metres at 17.5 grams is currently not in resource. So what we're doing at the moment, we're infilling around this result and we expect that um, we'll bring some of that mineralisation into resource in the next update with a higher cutoff. Uh, so what's happened to the project is, you know, it's value creation through the drill bit. We've been drilling, we haven't stopped. Uh, we've picked the grade up from about 1.2 grams per tonne in 2015 and adding more high, gr high grade in. The combined grades over 1.7 grams now, and what that translates into for the actual mine schedule is probably a grade well north of three or four grams per ton in the early years of the project. Um, it's a bit of a snapshot here of the layout. So all the deposits are very close together. Uh, we have a central processing plant, um, accelerating the schedule with un underground from from uh, year one. Uh, and there'll be an increase in capex from what we had in, in February, but it's kind of a good increase. Uh, just quickly on other stuff that's going on at West African. So we've got near mine exploration, so we'll continue drilling around M1 South and also around M5. Um, a bit further afield, we've got the Goudre, Moktedu and Mega areas. So all high priority targets. Um, Mega and Moktedu have got geochem targets more than 10 kilometres. Uh, Goudre's got rock chips over two ounces. So we haven't looked at those projects for quite a while. And regionally, we've still got other projects in the, in the pipeline. So the takeaway from this slide is really you don't stop drilling. So up the top there, we're going to keep drilling all the way through. And the good thing about this project is it's given, it's continued to give. So um, most companies, when they go on a feasibility study, stop drilling and they kind of think about fees. We'll, we'll do that, but we'll also keep drilling. So we've got the opportunity to continue to add ounces to the project. Um, that will see us... Uh, completing the study in 
mid-year financing towards the end of this year, breaking ground early next year and then pouring gold in 2020. So just in summary, uh, we are going to maximise the project value before we uh, push the button. So that's what we've, we've been focused on for the last 18 months and we're well funded to carry out this uh, work program with $21 million in the bank. Thank you.